to you. So without further ado, please put your hands together and welcome Stefan, Marcel, and David. Awesome. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Good, uh, guten Morgen. Good morning to you all. Um, who has been to Munich before? <laughs> and who has been to the Oktoberfest out of these people? And um, what did we love going there? Party, right? Another thing, maybe? The beer, right? So we love the beer, I guess. And one thing is very important for each and every one that actually goes to the Oktoberfest, and that is the experience. And that's what we want to show you today, what we can do with the Unreal Engine for our customers, because we are bringing the customer experience way up. Uh, with me on stage is Stefan. He's the business developer, or one of the business developer of Epic Games. And we have David with us as well. He's a technical marketing manager. And I'm Marcel. I'm head of 3D and CGI at BMW Group. And the start will be doing David. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my name is um, David Bayliss. I'm a technical marketing manager at um, Epic Games. And uh, what I do is I specialize in automotive rendering inside of Unreal Engine. So today what we'll be seeing is uh, how to achieve photorealistic results inside of real time and get the best uh, out of the engine. So this image, what you see here, is actually path traced inside UE5 uh, using the latest build. So what I like doing uh, first uh, with the cars is uh, starting in a neutral environment. So when you start your loop development, what you want to do uh, typically is start with a neutral background here. So I'm using a white studio here, and um, this really, really just gives me um, a good uh, environment to study my car paints or the different materials that I'm going to be applying to my car. Now what you see here is uh, the color calibrator. And uh, this is actually in the engine. Uh, you can search for it in the content and type in color calibrator. And uh, this is a free mesh that you can put in the scene and sort of study the lighting a bit. Uh, there's a chrome sphere also, and there's a gray ball, just to study a bit the lighting. <laughs> Check your gray values and make sure you're not too overexposed or underexposed. Uh, so generally, you want to you know, be doing that. I always use a uh, bigger version of uh, the ball here and um, just to check my reflections, uh, whether I'm using lumen reflections or path trace reflections. I want to make sure that everything is clear, um, reading correct reflections, so my car um, displays uh, good reflections. So the next uh, content that I use, uh, of course, is the automotive material pack. And that is free on the marketplace. It's a really good base for you to start your look development. It has over 180 materials that contains car paints, uh, leather, rubber, plastic. Very useful to start populating uh, your scene uh, with those materials and assigning the different materials to the car. Now, the good thing is it's optimized for real time. It's constantly updated. Um, and you will be able to find updates regularly uh, when uh, the updates are made to the engine. And the last thing that I like to do is that it's very customizable. So you can start with the shaders and add a bit of uh, different um, you know, roughness or imperfection uh, onto the material quite easily. All right, so I'm going to be explaining a bit about the lighting techniques that I use uh, inside Unreal and see how we can achieve uh, some nice results uh, in the studio. OK, so here I am in the editor right now. Uh, this is using path tracer mode. This is running completely real time. And what I'm doing here is just placing a few lights on top of the car, just playing around, just uh, having a good feedback of the real time here. Uh, playing with the brake lights here, just adding a bit more uh, colors, just seeing what works best here. Switching between lumen and pass choice here. What I'm doing here is really important, is I'm making the car smile, basically. I'm just putting some lights uh, onto the wheels only, so I'm using the lighting channels, which means that that only affects the wheels and not the whole body. And that I'm just giving a bit more light uh, to the wheels uh, just to make the car smile, basically. 
So again, playing with the lights here, uh, just getting a feel. Again, zooming on the wheels. I really love the, love the wheels. Switching between lumen and path trace, uh, just to compare my results here. And then um, just zooming back out, and I'm going to be playing with the field of view here, uh, with the lens, just to get some nice sense. This is the rendered image done in Movie Render Queue. Uh, this is the one also we did. And then again, the wheel, which I love so much. We get some really nice tire details, and uh, this was rendered in 4K uh, just in about two minutes on an RTX A6000. All right, so I'm going to be talking a bit about the Variant Manager here. Uh, the Variant Manager is um, a very understated uh, feature inside Unreal Engine 5. This allows you to swap between uh, configurations quite easy without coding anything, which is pretty useful for me as an artist. Uh, my you know, blueprints uh, can be a bit hard sometimes. Using the Variant Manager is a very easy way of uh, getting your configurations in there. So here you see on the top right, uh, I have a list of configuration here. So I'm switching between different moods here. So I've got the white studio, and I can switch between dark very easily. What I'm doing also here is uh, I'm doing the wheel rotation on the front wheel. So every time I'm changing my camera view, I want the wheel to face me. So I can easily do that uh, with the variant manager and place the wheel and just add the rotation uh, wherever my camera is. What I'm doing here also is setting up a thumbnail directly from the viewport so I can see exactly uh, what that configurator does. I don't have to import a file. Very easy, I can set from the viewport. Now, in the Calvert Studio exterior shots, um, this is using Lumen. What I'm going to be doing here is just demonstrating the real-time global illumination uh, system in UE5. As you can see, as I'm changing the sun position, we get all the uh, global illumination and the real-time shadows affecting here. So already getting some nice results in Lumen, but uh, I'm going to be switching to Pass Tracer now, which is way more powerful, and playing again with the field of view just getting a good sense of angle here. And once I'm done with that, what we have is uh, a nice uh, image uh, rendered in Movie Render Queue. Uh, a nice top view here with uh, the nice uh, shadows going on, some nice reflections. Um, again, that's really important for you to you know, use that chrome sphere to really study the reflections on the car. All right, so I'm going to go into the interior shots now, which are also pass traced. And these are my favorite ones because um, there's so many ambient lighting going on in the scene. And it was really fun just to play around with the different moods here. So this is the interior of the uh, 7 Series. Uh, we got a lot of mood lighting. Uh, we got some light going in. Um, really just like the, the feel of this. Um, and in this image, what I wanted to do is basically uh, have this uh, sensation of you know you being in the back seat being chauffeured around and just bring that nice tone of image uh, this inviting image uh, to the scene so a couple of movie around the queue uh, settings here uh, i know some people are really interested in uh, always asking me oh what kind of settings are you using so in the movie around the queue what i do is i set the renderer to path tracer and then I set the anti-aliasing to none. And the two uh, last ones are probably the most important. Those are the settings that I used for the interior shot. Spatial sample to 40, temporal sample to 40. Uh, just make sure when you're using path tracing, you want to use a lot of spatial samples uh, to make it uh, look good. Otherwise, it might appear a bit bland. So make sure you, you boost those up. And now switching to the night mood. Again, a uh, very inviting uh, image, nice feel, uh, very cozy, ambient. You can see the skylight, uh, the sky dome here with the nice LEDs. I really love that. Um, it's funny, actually, that my home, I have like, so many like, blue lights and red lights going. So I had so much fun just uh, 
having fun with, uh, with this and just putting different lights um, and studying the different ambient lighting here. So I'm going to be talking a bit about the variant manager in a bit of an advanced way and how I can combine that with the sequencer. So I'm going to go in the interior shots, uh, switching between moods and also using the sequencer to animate the TV. All right, so we have the TV animating here. We have the, uh, the blind coming up and uh, to do the cinematic mode. And this was done uh, completely during the sequencer uh, inside UE5. And I'm going to be showing you a bit of the behind the scenes of how I achieved this. So we have the sequencer right here. We have some keyframes. And uh, right now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm scrubbing in real time, uh, just checking my animations, how they're working which is pretty useful because I can see exactly what's going on from different angles. Now switching to my camera, this is running in real time in the viewport. So I can exactly really see uh, how my lighting looks, how my, um, uh, how my animation looks too, all in real time. So I'm running Path Tracer here, so you see a bit of noise, but uh, all, all working really good here. Now, what I'm doing here, I've got the variant manager and I'm setting different uh, moods here inside the scene. And I'm easily navigating in the scene, super easy, uh, just testing the different ambient lighting here. So I got a bunch of different settings here, uh, which I'm switching. So I'm playing a bit with the exposure, I'm playing with the lighting. Uh, and you don't even have to load any scene. This is all in the same scene. Uh, massive gain of time here uh, in terms of uh, effic efficiency. So yeah, just testing different, uh, different angles here. I'm going to be testing here the animation, uh, just making sure that works fine, and uh, just switching between the variant manager. So really just showing everything here, uh, how easy it is to navigate in the scene, uh, switching between path trace and lumen um, without uh, any trouble. Uh, with the RTX A6000. Thank you for your attention and see you very soon. So, <clears throat> wasn't that fantastic? Let's see what we do with it at BMW and also what our customers can actually experience. And everything that I'm going to show, that we are going to show you, is live. You can check it out. Um, on our websites or on different platforms, which I'm going to show you now. So where are we currently using the Unreal Engine? We're using it uh, in, in the design um, um, branch, in development, in production, in marketing, and sales. Today, we thought we want to focus on marketing and sales, because that is actually the part of the Unreal Engine that our customers are experiencing currently at the BMW Group. So, what was the case in 2018? Uh, we had these lovely machines out in the markets at almost every dealership, 5,000 of them, and they were not being used at all. The reason is, also we were on a different game engine back in the day, and um, the reason is the, um, the software that was on there, the application was not interlinked to the sales systems, meaning a sales advisor would, um, the, a customer would come and they would talk about the new, maybe seven series, and then he or she did everything. And if the customer wanted to see the car as a, a 3D real time, he would have to do or she the whole thing again um, with that machine. So all the machines were not being used. The dealerships bought the machines, uh, 3,000 euros in general, all around the world, and they didn't use them at all. The, uh, and thus led to a very traditional sales approach. So we did not have 3D real-time uh, within our sales approach at all. So we changed, we changed that, and we developed EVE. Our software is called EVE. EVE stands for the Emotional Virtual Experience. And the cool thing is, we developed it, and now it's not only for BMW as the uh, previous machine, so the previous software, but for every BMW, every Mini, and every Volkswagen. <clears throat> so, how did we do that? Actually, we used the existing machines that were already at the dealerships. 
And we started to roll them out already in 2013, which actually the dealers loved because they did not have to buy new machines. So this uh, hardware was there and we just deployed the new application. Which, um, by the way, which, myself, yeah. just quickly, for us was also a huge challenge, not only for us, also for the guys from Accenture who were making this application because we needed to run on this traditional hardware with even advancing the visualization component on that one. Right. And that was a huge challenge, but we hopefully did resolve that in a way that you are happy with it. And also uh, the integration And, and also part. the dealers, yeah. Right. Because um, we said we did not want to have one day with a black screen. That's what we're saying, with an empty screen. So we always want to have content on there. So the now a sales approach is like that. So the sales advisor, which is basically um, showing the car right now to the customer, um, is always using 3D real time. And we're going to show you now how it looks. Our success is we are now out in 66 uh, markets and out of the 5,000, the dealers loved it so much, so, so they bought 2,000 more. And we did not force them. They are doing it by themselves. <laughs> And uh, in general, we have 2.5 million configurations over the three brands. So that's led. Uh, I'm not allowed to uh, tell you how much, but we did do a huge study when 3D real time was actually being used during a sales approach and without. This led to a quite high or higher transaction price, which is good for a company, right? Because that is how we are actually uh, doing profit. And the conversion rate also went up. So, I was talking about the machines, but also we took the whole application and put it into the cloud. If you want, take off your smartphones and see what our customers are getting every time when they are receiving a sales contract. I'm going down right now, and maybe, sir, before you scan, have a look at your lovely Next7 uh, series, and maybe you can also show the audience how much uh, or how, how many pictures or anything are on there. So that car, actually it's uh, that seven series, is $120,000. So it's not the uh, most affordable one for, for most of us. And um, so if you want to hold it up very quickly, because the only, uh, actually the paper, uh, the, the paper very quickly, because the only thing that we have on there as an asset, because that is coming out of a sales system, is this very, very tiny picture. And we said, well, to be honest, that's not premium. So, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so um, we developed the EVE digital brochure. So every time a customer is receiving this uh, sales contract, he or she is also getting the uh, digital asset of exactly that car. Um, here in the US, we are uh, selling a lot of stock cars, but especially in Europe, our customers, they love to configure it. They want to do everything on their car individualized. So they love it. Yeah. Just wanted to add on that one because you just showed already the printout, you showed the QR code, you showed all the kind of nice images produced by that one and also talked about already the integration into the sales system and all of this was possible due to the openness of the Unreal Engine yeah. and that's one of the major advantages also when we did back in the days the pitch to BMW, I still remember that one. What you most loved about this was the possibility to modify the engine and to make it work in your existing system. Right. You don't need to yeah. somehow squeeze it in, right? Correct. And uh, not to have a single, um, a single application right. that uh, would mean that we need to um, train the, de the dealer staff again. Right. Because with our application now, it actually it's just, like, it's just like magic. They do it in their existing sales system and this, the uh, screen, which is standing right next to them, shows the car in 3D, which is pretty cool. So next slide actually shows the digital uh, brochure that you've just seen. But um, who can tell me what our brand claim is of the BMW brand? It is. So in German, it's Freude am Fahren, mm -hmm. and it's the ultimate driving machine. Uh, maybe you've seen it if, uh, when you scanned it. Um, the cars are standing. So I said to my team, why don't we actually hand over a digital asset to our customers so that their individualized car is driving and not just standing and the cam cameras flying around. So what we came up with is the EVE emotional drive. And we wanted to have a small story around it as well. So we wanted to go back to our hometown, which is Munich. 
And um, I'll just quickly show you um, what you're going to see in the EFE emotional drive or the customers. So we're starting off right in the middle of Munich. Uh, we drive along the Ludwigstraße. Then we see our office where we're actually seeing, so our headquarters. Uh, we go out into the uh, mountains, have lovely alpine roads, and then have a beautiful shot at the end. That's pretty cool, we thought, but we wanted more because we have a friend called Hans. And maybe um, you know that every time when you start an electric car of BMW, you hear that. Hans composed it and also sitting in the back of the 7 Series and you fold down the theater screen that David was just showing, this is the sound that you're getting. So Hans also composed it. So what I did, I called his management and told him, well, we have actually quite a nice uh, 3D real-time application and it runs on Unreal Engine. It would be cool if uh, he would have the time to compose the music for the EVE Emotional Drive. And he did. So here it is. That is live. So every time a customer gets, thank you very much. <laughs> um, every time a customer is getting a sales offer, he's also getting a special thing from us and also in combination with Hans Zimmer. Stefan. If you, if you don't believe it, just go to the next BMW dealership and ask for a i7 series and get to configure that one. You will get it. And the, main, the amazing thing about this is the openness about that one. We put this into the cloud. We push the configuration codes towards it. We have the pre-configuration, as David just showed, which just switching in the variant manager quickly the model, push it to the uh, sequencer, and then it's running, rendering, and then deliver it directly to the customer. I think it takes something like half an hour or something like that. Yeah, well, um, yeah, time. we are saying 30 minutes. Right. Um, we are now down to, I think, eight minutes. Rendering. Uh, eight when the queue is not too uh, loaded. Well. That's great. <laughs> um, so, um, what I've shown you uh, was on the sales contract. What we have also done is, we um, are now rendering all the cars on our website also directly out of the Unreal Engine. Um, so the pictures that you're seeing on the website are also coming out of the Unreal Engine and also the movies that we are going to show you. They are called the product substance films. Um, what is the reason why we're doing it? I don't know if you know it, but in, in the automotive world, we always update the current products. So every four months, we are updating every product. Sometimes it's a very small update, sometimes it's quite big. And since we are selling the cars worldwide, some countries actually have laws that you're only allowed to show cars um, in a configuration how um, the customer can actually buy it. So we had the problem that we have lovely assets and sometimes after one year, we had to take down all the assets from, from the website because the, the product had been updated. Um, so let's dive into our first um, we call it the studio artwork, that's our internal name for it, and that's how we are um, showing the cars on our websites to our customers. Someone wants to add something? David, Stefan? Maybe the only thing which I wanted to add on that one is, first of all, it's looking amazing, but um, I think it will be even more amazing once we roll out 5.1, mm -hmm. giving the artists even more possibility with the new material pack. And that's yep. bringing me back also to one of the points which was raised by David in the beginning when he talked about the automotive material pack. You really, really should use the p packages we are providing, not because we want to force you to, pro to use those, but we are constantly updating those and with 5.1 introducing Strata, 
and giving new more possibilities, better. more configuration options to adjust for the artist. We will also give an update on the automotive material pack. So absolutely follow that advice, please. Yes, yeah, yeah. please make sure you yeah, have to download um, that. And it's going to be using the multi-layer system. So you'll have a nice clear coat and uh, more control over the um, car paints. Yeah, and uh, obviously we are not doing it all by ourselves internally. Uh, we have a couple of agencies and actually our main agency for um, rendering um, everything out of the Unreal Engine is Accenture Song. And we would like to show you how we are, together with them, producing our assets. So a quick film of uh, 60 seconds, I think. love seeing that. And um, since we've now had a look on the um, um, how it's how we are producing it, um, we wanted to show you um, one of the assets, so one of their product substance films that is online on the website. So you can check it out as well on the American or German or Italian, French, whatever. It's all it's uh, everywhere. Um, and uh, one thing before I show it, what you've seen, I think, when we had maybe uh, 50 different small videos there, we can uh, put all the configurations in there, which is amazing for us, because the cars, they do differ from America to Europe to Asia, right? So we can just put the configuration in there and render out the different national packages, as we say it. So let's have a look how it looks online. That was actually our first product substance film, which we produced uh, in February this year. And we made it public on April 20th, when we came out with the new 7 series. And uh, that product substance film uh, featured basically um, a lot of the elements of um, the ex exterior of the car. And then we produced simultaneously another one that features the interior. So you will see the uh, theater screen now, um, also in action in the product substance film. Thank you.
I think you've seen how um, how good also the materials look there, the inside of the car. And uh, Stefan? But yeah, not, not only the materials, one of the things I'm yeah. always thrilled to see such things. But I, I exactly know how it is from that perspective to develop such a look and feel. And David already was mentioning it, that you get an instant feedback. And that's one of the advantages if you turn into real-time technology in comparison to these offline renderings where you can only go back to your customer and tell them, imagine how it would look like. Now you go back to the customer and say how it looks exactly. and tell it and, and, and can adjust materials and looks and all of that in real time. Yep. And that's one of the things which is also speeding up and shortening the time to market. And that's one of the big advantages which also by BMW is heavily used. And in addition to this, the integration of the systems, we were talking about this already, but you, in the, in the beginning, you already said you're using not only for the sales and marketing, so the integration possibility in the complete workflow of the engine, that's something which we love, and that's why we are so happy to have you on board with us in order to push that a little bit further down the line. Yeah, and we are actually pushing it quite hard, yes. internally as well. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> to say. <laughs> um, yeah. So these two films actually featured the beauty of the car, and then obviously a BMW stands for a lot of technique, innovations, all that as well. So for our newest car, um, like not the BMW colleagues know, uh, but what is the newest car that we uh, uh, showed to the public two weeks ago? Anyone? Correct. Thank you very much, oh. sir. You get a small BMW model after. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we um, and what is the XM? You know more about it? Yeah, it's a hybrid uh, sports Correct. Wow. Whoa. Uh, I think we will hire you. <laughs> and so, so we are going to, um, uh, we wanted to show exactly what he was just saying, the plug-in hybrid uh, engine technology. And uh, yeah, why don't we just show it to you um, how we are explaining it to our customers. Same road as you see, right? So we are reusing the assets. Yeah, and I think um, um, they, you can see why we are loving um, like rendering out these assets because we can reuse the environments, all that. Uh, we build up now, uh, together with Accenture Song in this case, um, a great, uh, great um, seaside road, uh, which is actually quite long, I think uh, 2.5 kilometers, um, that we can play with. And then additionally, um, for our small cars, medium cars, and very premium cars like the 7 Series and um, the 8 Series or the XM, we have a, um, like each of our uh, model groups have a different environment on top as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so let me show you the uh, last um, uh, product substance film, um, also from the XM. Uh, why did I bring it to you? Because uh, actually we had a look at uh, Stranger Things and we loved the underworld thingy, so we played a bit with that. So enjoy the XM and actually um, that's not copyrighted, so I didn't say Stranger Things, but for you obviously, enjoy.
was. Thank you very much. The, um, the last product substance film. So um, whenever we are since the seventh series, so since April, whenever we are launching a new model, we have between four to seven product substance film to explain the car to our customers um, on our websites. Speaking of websites, um, so when you go onto our website, you go to uh, I don't to France as an example, BMW.fr for France, and then you click on a specific model. You will then be guided over to the so-called model hub, where you will see these uh, movies and images assets that we were that we were uh, showing to you. Um, we also have a configurator, right? And uh, for those of y'all that ever have worked with a configurator, that's the challenge. Uh, but we also made it possible since the a new seven series now to render um, the layer stacks out of the Unreal Engine as well. So what we did is um, we digitized the BMW Welt, which is a big building in Munich, our, our brand temple. And um, yeah, digitized it and the configurator features the BMW Welt. Um, we did that and were quite happy about it. And then came the management. And they were like, <laughs> they were like it's great, but does the, um, the BMW, so does um, this environment actually stand for the brand itself? So we were being um, tasked of finding a new environment that actually represents the brand even more. And uh, for the XM, we uh, went live with it. We call it internally waterfront. So what we did is we took the BMW logo, put it down, and we are actually, as an example, the car would be standing here. So that's the new environment. We did not close it up completely. You can see it online when you configure your own XM, which I hope you can also buy then <laughs> afterwards. Uh, we did not close down the whole environment. Uh, we actually, it's like, like the Chanel logo. We have two small um, Cs that are surrounding it to, to give the car a bit more freedom. Um, and also, as you see, uh, um, when you have a look at the wall over there, it's not too high because we didn't want to have the car being put in a cage, as we say in German. Yeah, so how does Waterfront look like? These are the uh, configurator images that are, once again, also live. And I wanted to have a bit more emotion in it as well. So I um, said to the team, I would love to have a sundown version of it as well, which is also live. When you click on the small moon icon, this is how the car then looks in the configurator. Yeah, and... Uh, Just quickly yeah. on that one, because in that image, you're pretty nice to see what David always was highlighting about the wheels. Although the sun is coming from the back, normally you would see that all the wheels are getting blacked out. Yeah. And they did exactly what David was telling, that we did uh, specific Lighting lights on channel. the wheels to yeah. make the car smile. smile. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. And another good thing, also, um, uh, for us working with the Unreal Engine. In this case, we did the, the first concept with a um, different agency than Accenture Song. So we did it with Media Monks. Um, they also built up the whole 3D model. We took it um, to our uh, main agency for our configurator, and uh, they were actually um, quite happy about it because they could easily work with it, which might not sound for you such a new thing, but for us, it was actually kind of cool to have two agency working very close and good together in this case. Yeah, and let's just do a quick recap. So you've seen that uh, we are using the Unreal Engine um, on our websites. We are having the 3D real-time configurator um, at our dealerships. Also, obviously, we're putting the whole thing in the cloud now, which will be live as well for the dealerships soon. And uh, within sales, we're actually quite advanced. And yeah, that's it, I think. And now we're very happy to have a couple of questions and everything. Before we close.